eleven thirty, um, and I'm uh, I'm sitting in my car. This was the day of my father's funeral, and um, it was a pretty surreal experience. You know, you have these strong emotions, and then they stop. And then you're there with doing other things, just sort of as it is in life. You know, something comes up and it's like, you stub your toe. And it hurts. Ow, 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 that's it. And then, then it stops hurting. And then you're like, oh, that's right. I was, I'm going to go eat lunch now or somebody else is here or I'm at work or a million other things. Or somebody says something funny or you go eat or whatever. And um, it just keeps going. And then you take a few more steps. You're like, oh, oh, my toe hurts. Ow. And you go back to it. But then it moves on to something else. And that's, that's life. And that's also the grieving process. And then, you know, being in there just with the coffin, you know, the body's inside and it didn't look to see the body I saw him it's you know when his soul was there so um you know emotional and then you know we get out we go through that process and we talk and all of these things and then we get out to the gravesite and then you actually have to bury you know, put the casket in the ground and cover it with dirt and shovel and these things. And at that point, I'm kind of just sitting outside and it's like watching this happen. And, you know, it's just like, wow, this is actually, this is actually happening right now. Um, you know, and at each stage is a challenge. Um, and then you get into this space where some things just feel like a formality. Like, yeah, well, this is the next thing you do now. Because you can't, you know, cry forever. You can't allow your hurt toe to literally consume your life. It comes and it goes. And you're present to it and you address it you touch it and you love it and and that's not even a choice you can't stop it you can't stop the flow because you can choose how long it lingers sometimes <clears throat> you know and sometimes remembering the pain can hurt so much that it might even feel worse than if the pain just never went away. But it diminishes. And maybe never goes away. Your toe might always be a little wonky. But there's so much of life that there is to celebrate. And um, came home from the funeral and went to my bathroom and there's a bunch of piss flooding out of my shower drain my shower drain and um, the bathroom's in a way where there's no lip it's like the whole bathroom is just sort of tiled a little bit. So there's, you know, angled down. And amazingly, it had just started because it hadn't, like, flooded out of the bathroom yet. And so I open the door, and then it's all of this piss is just starting to come out, like, in big floods. And fortunately was able to throw towels enough down and then go figure something else out. It's, there's, you know, much more to come of that, of course. 
but so surreal. Like, you know, it, having to go from burying my father directly home to piss flooding out of my shower are two ridiculous things. They're things that have never, both things have never happened to me before. Or I should say, I've never been a part of, or even witnessed. And so, you know, you get to this point, and sometimes emotions are so much that it's like, it's frustrating that it's happening, no doubt. But you just look at it and say, what, what is happening right now? What is life right now? What, like... How is this a thing that this is happening right now? Am I creating this? Did we all create this? Just like, is this a big joke? I don't know, man. It's such a trip, the whole thing. Everything. Just such a trip. So surreal. You know, but where do you always come back to? You always come back to the space of just like, yeah, but. I like it. I like life. I'm happy to be alive. I want to be here. When you see people die, and then you think, you know, I want to be here for a while. But why? What's the quality? You know? And MLK talked about that. Longevity has its place, but it's the breath of life. But why compromise one for the other? You can't have both. And so, then I had a minion come over to my house to sit shiva. And so then I have a dozen people, and some I know, some I haven't met, come. And all of a sudden, everybody's holding sea doors, and the rabbis there, and we're saying prayers. And then it comes up to the mourner's cottage part, and then it's I say it. And... I remember growing up as a kid, going to see the Mourner's Cottage, and my dad standing up and saying the Mourner's Cottage, uh, which is basically the, uh, it's a prayer only said if you're in mourning, which is, you know, immediately after, of course, and for the first year, and some do it longer, you know, forever for a parent. And, uh, and then I was saying it. I, I had become my dad to his parents. And you're just there, you know, it was like, oh, okay, well, here's the burial. And, oh, here's all the piss flooding in the bathroom. And now, say this, say the mourner's cottage. Anyway, I had an emergency plumber come over. Oh, because after all the piss had stopped, and after the minion, which was perfectly timed, the... uh Drain decided to release some stuff again because it wasn't the the urine had stopped after about five soaked towels it just stopped coming out but this time it decided to release number one and number two and so <laughs> then we had an emergency plumber come over and um it was like dude your entire everything under the house is like are you open and it just backed up we just it just moved in here to this new place just a couple months ago so it's been here for I don't know how long and uh, the backup so they gotta run some hydro jet in the morning the house is filled with candles and the windows are open and uh, my roommates are plastic bags on their feet um, and some masks on I think and are cleaning up the fecal dam break and ensuing river down the hall all the way down the hallway and I can't sit in my car because I can't use the bathroom but I can use a catheter and I sat in my car and cathetered and Listen to comedy by Dimitri Martin and Mitch Hedberg. 
And that's how the day... I was going to say that's how the day got capped. That's how the day is right now. Is at 11.45. I don't know what else is going to happen. I can't say this is going to cap the day. I don't know what's happening today. Today is surreal. But, man, you know, as I sit here reflecting on it, you know, when is it too soon to laugh? You do. It doesn't mean I'm not going to cry again. But sometimes that's the only only relief that there is. You know. Of all these things that were happening, it does sort of put things in the context, you know. This is gross and frustrating and, you know, smelly, but you can handle it. And, uh, you know, not worth getting so worked up about you can see other things of a more significant result can't be taken care of by throwing away some towels. That smells from my car. Oh, God, I'm just sitting in my car and it smells. What a day. What a life. What wild life. We chose this. And it actually exists. All of this exists and it's happening and we experience it and we create it. And we feel it. We participate in it. We witness it. We judge it. We affect it. It affects us. Everything. Yeah. Until we die. And then we don't do any of those things. Not to say that our soul... Our eternal self doesn't live forever, but it doesn't do these things. It doesn't smell poop and put on plastic bags on your feet. It doesn't eat, give hugs, play baseball, run, jump. Love in a tangible form. So many things to do here in this life while we have it. And being that it's all connected, you know, where's the lesson in all this? Just bring things to the surface so you can get them cleaned. Bring it all to the surface. What a day. I kind of have a feeling my dad is watching all this, but laughing. A lot. He might have been the one that did it. Good one, Dad. Love you. <laughs>